In July of 2017, Angelina Costello, three, was found dead in her parents' home, covered in bruises, scars, laceration, and open wounds. Join me in the murder she shed as we discuss this case of two biological parents that were monsters to their own baby girl. My name is Holly. This is the place we honor the dead right from my she shed. I cover breaking cases and also rarely discuss cases right here weekly. So hit that subscribe button in order to keep coming back to the murder she shed. Where you can see this southern girl usually two times weekly, sometimes three. If you want to, you don't have to. I'm not making you. Just hit it if you want. I'm not that bad. Not that bad. As with all child cases, viewer discretion is of ice. With that, let's begin. On July 6, 2017, just a little after noon, officers entered a home in Ogden, Utah to find the most horrific scene. It was so bad that one former detective said the Angelina Costello case was a career ender for her. So horrific that she no longer wanted to be a police officer. After entering, three-year-old Angelina Costello was found deceased and had been for a while because rigor mortis had already set in on her little body. Angelina's mother, Brenda Mills, said she had called authorities as soon as she had walked into her daughter's room and found her deceased. After the parents realized Angelina was dead, they ran around getting rid of drugs and the things they used to hurt her with. It was Angelina's four-year-old brother who told his parents that Angelina had passed. Before she passed, she said she was cold and this little boy went and got her a blanket. Detectives would find her little deceased body wrapped in that same pink blanket. Detectives observed bruising, contusions, lacerations, burns, open sores, and abrasions all over Angelina's face, hands, legs, head, and neck. Angelina was so malnourished that officers at the scene described her as looking like a Holocaust victim. At three years old, Angelina only weighed 13 pounds. Think about that. Only a few pounds more than a newborn baby. She had new injuries as well as injuries in various stages of healing. After Angelina's clothes had been removed, a large burn was observed on her chest. She also had small circular burns on her back, legs, and feet where cigarettes had been put out on her little body. Her stomach was sunken in and her legs and arms were thin and atrophied with no visible muscle tone. In an attempt to hide her injuries, the mother, Brenda, had applied makeup. Think about this mother going to get her makeup to rub on her dead daughter to cover her butt and not having any care about the daughter she gave birth to. So cold and heartless. Not only that, they were running and hiding their drugs and hiding the things they had tortured this little girl with. Just disgusting, disgusting monsters. Her reply to officers was, I didn't want the injuries to look so bad. Angelina's father is 30-year-old Miller Costello, and the mother, Brenda Emile, is 28. In 2011, when the Romani couple first got married, they lived in Billings, Montana, with three small children. Angelina was the middle child. Although the couple were both Romani, they were from different tribes. Angelina's father, Miller, drove all over looking for scrap metal to sell and claimed he would be gone six days a week. He returned home once a week, attended to the needs of his family, washed his clothes, and then hit the road looking for more scrap metal to sell. Brenda was a stay-at-home mom. Miller said his parents did not want him to marry Brenda. He said his parents told him she is evil and warned him that Brenda's family is very bad. Miller was on probation for fraud and was accused in Montana of cheating a scrap metal customer out of thousands of dollars. He was also arrested in Montana in 2014 on an alleged domestic violence charge after reportedly assaulting Brenda. So he wasn't so great himself. 
Brenda claimed to grow up in a dysfunctional family. Brenda was the only girl born in her family, and her parents were both severely mentally ill and were drug addicts. She witnessed her father cut himself, bang his head on the wall, and one time set his hair on fire. The father also abused her and her mother. One time he even tried to cut Brenda's head off with a license plate. He kicked Brenda, choked her, and cut off her hair. Brenda did not attend school after the second grade, so her English speaking and writing skills are self-taught. Miller even claims Brenda's dad beat him. Miller claimed her father beat him and locked him in a closet for a week. He claimed that there was no more skin on his face from the beatings. Brenda became addicted to drugs after complication from the birth of their third child in 2016, Angelina's younger sister. Not long after, Miller became addicted to drugs too. In the Romani culture, a suspicion of mental disorder or physical defect can be considered a curse. It singles out this person as worthy of being hurt, according to an expert witness called on the side of the defense. Miller did not think Angelina was his child. So when she was born, premature and highly dysfunctional, Miller said, see, that's true. She's cursed. Miller told officials he knew the girl's health was deteriorating and that she did need medical attention or she would die. He knew that. He said various times when he returned home from work, he saw new injuries on Angelina, who was in Brenda's care during the day, but did not seek medical attention or inform police. He didn't try to feed her either, even though he could see that she was hungry because he claimed Brenda would be upset with him. Now, see, I don't believe this claim, considering he has been arrested for domestic abuse in the past. He was not afraid of Brenda, if that was his claim. Liar, liar, your pants on fire. No way. You're not claiming that, buddy. Miller claimed Brenda did not want Angelina after her family learned that she was going to have a girl. He said her dad and mom said, kill that baby inside of you. It is bad luck. Brenda did not want Angelina after that and increased her smoking while pregnant. Brenda and Miller basically documented the last year and a half of torture, abuse, and injury on their phones. Angelina suffered immense amounts of pain, torture, taunting with food, going from a healthy one-and-a-half-year-old to a dead three-year-old. Both Brenda and Miller repeatedly taunted Angelina with food. In one video, they had recorded Brenda offering her food, then took it away and said, I lied, it's mine. Mmm, this is so good. No food for you. She was laughing the whole time as she told her starving little girl this. Hand her food, took it away, and said, you're not getting any. And the little girl was starving. What kind of mother does that? That is not a mother, that's a monster. One video clip showed Miller using the feet of Angelina's brother to kick Angelina in the face. In the videos, Angelina is in an obvious state of duress and distress. The recording showed that Angelina was taunted and mocked by both of her parents. In one video, Angelina was forced to stand in the corner while the couple played with their two other children. The family went to Disneyland in May of 2017, two months before she died. Angelina was wearing a long sleeve shirt and a beanie, apparently to cover burns, bruises, and her malnutrition. The other two children wore t-shirts, typical warm weather clothing. Even so, some of Angelina's injuries were still notable on the videos. Her eyes were sunken, and the right side of her nose was missing. You can really see that the malnutrition is affecting her at this point. She looks sad and defeated. Angelina's older brother and younger sister, who have been adopted now, said that one time a piece of onion was on the floor and Angelina ate it. She was so hungry. Her brother said they all got hit with wires. He also said their parents had rigged a shock device. They would attach to Angelina's body as a method of torture. He added that he and Angelina once were locked in a dark closet together for several days without food or water. What was the most traumatic to her brother is that he had been forced to kick and hit his sister. According to the ME, Angelina suffered blunt force injuries to her head, torso, and extremities. 
significant head and neck injuries, internal bleeding, organ damage, the traumatic chipping of teeth and deep burns to her little chest and abdomen, cigarette burns all over her little body that melted her skin. Her pancreas was bruised and had bled. The medical examiner stated that extreme blunt force trauma was needed to go through the abdomen and strike the pancreas against the spine. The cartilage in the right side of Angela's nose was destroyed. There had been so much trauma. Had she lived, she would have needed reconstructive surgery. She also had broken teeth, lacerations inside her mouth and to the piece of skin that holds the lower lip to the gum, extreme trauma to her lips and tongue. Her hygiene was deplorable. She died from a combination of blunt force trauma, burn, starvation, and malnutrition. Just a few days ago, the judge over this case sentenced both Miller and Brenda to life in prison and called the pair monsters. He also said she just deserved to be held in her parents' arms, to be loved and protected. Instead, she was dehumanized and tortured by monsters. Neither defendant, he said, has shown remorse or taken responsibility, and that speaks loudly to me. The people who mourn Angelina the most are a bunch of strangers who only got to know her after she died. Since they made a deal last year to plead guilty to first-degree murder, they were able to avoid the death sentence. The parents blamed each other for her death, and neither one would take responsibility of what they had done to this little girl. Sadly, I always try to say something about the victim, but I could not find any information about Angelina, not even her birthday, which is very, I have never come across a case, unless it was like a doe case. I've always been able to find a birthday. This little girl, even though we know who she was, I could not find a birthday even on her obituary. And I can only find the one picture. No other pictures. And it's a blurry, not clear picture. It's just sad. This little girl was only tortured and never loved like she deserved. But I know she has her angel wings and is getting the love she so deserved in heaven. Rest in peace, beautiful angel Angelina. Well, guys, sorry to leave you so depressed, so maybe I can cheer you up with a few bloopers on the end. I hate leaving y'all sad. I know these kinds of cases are hard to hear, but hopefully it will teach us to speak up for these little children if we are more alert and can see the signs of what is occurring in their home. I love y'all. Stay safe and have an amazing, blessed week. Bye. The other day, my husband was on the couch laughing hysterically while we were trying to watch TV, but he was on his phone and he was looking at something on his phone and I never seen him laugh so hard. I mean, tears were coming out the dude's eyes. Never seen him laugh like this. And he wouldn't say what he was laughing at and he just kept like hysterically laughing. I wish I'd had it on camera. I only got the last part on camera. I'm like, what, what? And then he don't say nothing. He just, with tears in his eyes, shows me this picture. I'll put it on screen. And I said, what are you trying to say here? Are you calling my she shed a bitch barn? Is that what we're implying? And he just keeps laughing hysterically and wouldn't say anything. He wouldn't say nothing. He wouldn't admit to what he'd done. He just kept laughing and laughing and laughing. I swear to God. Went on and on. I thought I was going to have to whoop his butt. I was like, are you kidding me right now? You just called my she shed a bitch barn? I was like, you haven't seen bitch yet, honey. You have not seen bitch yet. Anyway, the next day he brought me flowers. And if you haven't joined Facebook, you might check out Facebook. I put my flowers on my Facebook. Murder She Shed. I'm under Murder She Shed. You guys can go like me, follow me, whatever. And I'm also on TikTok. I always forget to mention that I'm on TikTok, Murder She Shed, or Facebook. If you have either one of those, come like me and follow me. I appreciate it. It really helps maybe get the word out there to other people that don't know about me. But I think if I put myself on other social media that I might get out to other people quicker. But I could be wrong. So anyway, I put my flyers on Facebook that he bought me after he called my She Shed a bitch barn. And he still don't admit that that's what he's did. He won't admit to it. But when you buy someone flowers, you're pretty guilty. You're pretty guilty, I'd say. 
I'm in my pajamas, so if you see my pajama bottoms, I apologize. I come home from church and I just put on my pajama bottoms. <laughs> you do so, baby boy. Say bye, we love you. We hope you have a blessed week. Here comes Max to tell your bye too. Max and Simon both gonna tell your bye. Hey, big kid. Bye, love y'all. See y'all later.